The artist who most perfectly captured that idea was Jeff Koons. His work transfigured the seemingly vulgar, the telltale lapse of taste of the nouveau riche. Most critics were horrified. Others saw a witty take on eclectic materialism. I think of Koons as Andy Warhol take two, but a Warhol who wants to liberate Americans, to wallow in their taste, no matter how kitsch or obscene. But it's hard to know whether I'm right or whether Coons has his tongue firmly in his cheek. Because if ever an artist was deadpan, more so even than Warhol, it's Jeff Coons. Andrew, how are you? I'm very well. Yeah. It's so nice to see you. So what are you working on at the moment? Paintings or sculptures? Uh, well, um, you know, I'm always working on uh, sculptures and paintings together. And uh, I'm working on uh, a series called Antiquity right now. And so I'm just in the process of uh, finishing off some of the first ones. So I know this is a work in progress, but we've got a lot of, as it were, your motifs here, in the sense of the shiny inflatable, the sexy girl, uh -huh. this wonderful dolphin. Uh -huh. and these, again, all seem to me to be playing into imagery that everybody likes. So I think you said to me in the past, you know, that you want everyone to feel they can participate in your work. You don't want to exclude anybody from your work. Well, a piece like this, I mean, I, I would think an average viewer could look at my daughter, Scarlett, who's only one year old, was here at the studio uh, three days ago, and I brought her in here, and she's just uh, pointing, ah, ah, you know, and uh, she loved the painting, and she was relating to maybe the, the childlike quality of the, uh, the monkey or just the feminine quality of the painting or the, the dolphin. When you're that age, you're open. I mean, it's just like... I mean, there's, there's nothing that uh, you're not open to. I mean, you're open to everything. And it's uh, the opposite of being closed down that, oh, that's kitsch. I don't believe in kitsch. Uh, I believe in things that, they, you know, they, they are as they are, and they're perfect as what they are. And if, and if lots of people like it, what's wrong with it? Yes. I see that as... Uh, as being generous because what you want to do in life is remove anxiety and the way you remove anxiety is through acceptance. My work always has been trying to communicate to people that it's all right to accept your own history, your cultural history, the things that you grew up with. Uh, I grew up with little knick-knack kind of uh, little ceramic pieces. My grandparents had it, my parents would have had ceramic lights. That's okay. The painting that we had above our fireplace, uh, which was just some commercial painting of some little hut out in a forest, that's what I looked at every evening. That's okay. My, um, my father and mother made us feel very much as though we were kind of participating in the American dream, that uh, we were the middle class, but there was always a sense that we were moving up. And I was always brought up to be very self-reliant, self-sufficient, and a lot of it's about this sense of mobility. Can I ask you about these huge, almost billboard-sized photographs of you making love to your then-wife, La Cicciolina? There was something weirdly pure and innocent about it. It's as if you'd taken pornographic imagery and somehow made it sort of innocent. Yeah. Were you trying to take, take that form and, and say, well, you needn't be degraded by it? Or, I, you know, I still find myself puzzling over those pieces. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to do was to make a body of work that communicated the removal of guilt and shame because I'm dealing with cultural guilt and shame. So I tried to use the body and the insecurity that people have, the guilt and shame that they have with their own body to again communicate this state of not having guilt and shame. And uh, that's the highest state that art can take you. And uh, there's no judgment, there's complete acceptance. However harshly most of the art establishment judged Coons's work, it scored a bullseye with wealthy bankers and social climbers. In fact, his work has since commanded some of the highest prices of any living artist.